Sales for episodes of Collision in Canada have not been selling as well. The June 24th Toronto episode is at 1,800 tickets. The June 29 episode, which will be taped, is only at 700 tickets still. Ooh. Regina is at 1,300 tickets. And the Owen Hart Cup tournament in Calgary on July 15th, the finals, are at 3,400 tickets. See right there, that shows you, and I'm not saying that the argument of we can't watch X show is not a reason to not buy tickets, okay? I get it in some cases that's the case, but I really just do think maybe part of it is oversaturated, you know, oversaturating the market. Again, a lot of people, I'm sure those fans have spent big money because they want to see all, you know, almost said all in together. That was the show this morning, but they want to see Forbidden Door. And again, with money being tight for a lot of people, I think there's a lot of other aspects at play here, including it's just not a hot enough product right now. And they're going to have to do something, obviously, to try to pop those ticket sales because you don't want buildings you know, for events with 700, 3,400 for the Owen Hart finals. I mean, that's now nah, you don't want that. So they got to figure out something here, but they're just going to have to get the product hot. Well, I think they can make 3,400 look good, but you're going to have oh, a you, tough you time could. making 700 look good. But what's the, the building size on that 3,400? I don't have it in front of me. You know, Although this person this. here, hey, this person lives in Regina, and he says this town does not sell advanced tickets. It's a walk-up town in the worst way. Well, So they could hey. end up doing fine. But they're at 1346 right now, so that better be a lot of people. They better have a walkway constructed in front of that building. I don't, and I, I don't know how they've done this because I have not. The couple of shows I've been to for AEW, they've been you know bigger crowds. It was towards the beginning, but I do remember going down to Virginia, and I can't remember what building it was. I think it was on the campus of VCU where Impact TNA at the time ran a show, and. They really did work magic as far as making you believe. You would have believed that place was packed the way they had the sound and the way they had everybody on one side. They did a really, really good job with that. So, you know, I guess you have that going for you if you have some of those older people from from Impact there. But still, acoustically, you know, it's tough when you have few people in there. People know it. I mean, unfortunately, look at Impact. When you look at the highlights, even on if you don't watch Impact, but just watch the highlights on Twitter that they have, you know, Bully Ray comes out there at the end. They got the eight-person schmoz going on to build up against all odds tonight. And unfortunately, there's just that echo. You can just tell there's not enough people there. And it's it's disappointing. And it's disappointing, too, for the performers because, again, it's usually not their fault that they're getting, you know, there's not a lot of people in the building. There's usually other parts about it. But, you know, it makes it tough. New Japan Strong Openweight Champion Kenta and Defy Heavyweight Champion, not sure why that's not listed here, <laughs> has responded to a report of a potential match against CM Punk at Forbidden Door. On Twitter Thursday, Kenta quote tweeted the wrestling covers Twitter account referencing a fightful report. God. <laughs> Should I read that one more time? Uh, yes. Kenta quote tweeted the wrestling covers Twitter account referencing a fightful report. 2020. That Kenta maybe. versus CM Punk has been discussed for Forbidden Door. Do we do we make sure we plug everybody in that? Is anyone I'm missing there? Is that about everything? <laughs> the Mid Atlantic Championship Podcast. Thank the you. The accompanying tweet included a fat a fake match graphic. <laughs> a fat made by the It's Tom's Customs account. There's another one. Okay. So It's <laughs> Tom's <laughs> Customs made a fake graphic after a fightful report that was then tweeted by Wrestle Covers and then quote tweeted by Kenta. Excellent. And then retweeted by many of you out there after Kenta sent it. Kenta said, oh, hell no. Tell Tony Khan, give me the bag. Mm -hmm. Kenta's acknowledgement of the report continues a long running, typically one-sided social media feud between Kenta and Punk, where Kenta teases the match and Punk does not acknowledge the possibility. On June 6th, Kenta tweeted in response to a video of Punk acknowledging that he stole his GTS finisher from Kenta in a red carpet interview from more than a decade ago. Kenta said he was only willing to wrestle Punk if the money was right. Kenta said, I don't really care who's the original, go to sleep. There is only one truth. If you want me to have the match against Punk, give me correct amount of money. Other than that, I don't need to have this match. Seriously. That's his tweet. Smart so is it happening or not, everybody? 
Huh? Yes. God, of course. You think it's happening? Of, of course. course. I would yes. not say of course. Hey, it's hey, how about maybe not at all uh at a forbidden door, but at some point they are going to get together and they are going to have that GTS face off. They will. Yeah, Mark I guess my we'll words. see about that. Dollar bet here, buddy. We talked about Cody and Brock three and how there would be a stipulation involved that we haven't seen in a while. And Dave and the New Observer reported there's been a lot of talk evening about adding match. the stipulation. No, it's not evening gown, Mike. Oh. We went over that a couple of days ago. Thank you. Sorry. One of the ideas being considered is a bull rope match. But that is not official. And there are other ideas on the table. There ain't going to be no other ideas. That's the one that's going to win. It's going to win. It's the one thing Dustin and Cody did one that was, look, they rushed into it, but considering what they were doing, I was fine with it in, in AEW. It's perfect for Brock. Can you think of a better match? You want to know why it's not perfect, actually, Mike? Why? Because his company doesn't allow blading. Well, and whoa. so you know that both guys are going to mm. have to find some way to slice themselves open hard way, either by legitimately hitting themselves as hard as possible with a cowbell or Brock doing the thing where he goes like this on the guy's head till it's split open. Luckily with Cody, you can breathe on him and he starts bleeding. So that's not going to be an issue. But Brock, I mean, he's going to have to do something crazy again. Just let him do, blade, bro. Do, do you not believe that there's a chance of that? Well, of course, that's what's going to happen. Either that or they just do the hidden blade and not the Osprey. Well, movie. they should do a hidden blade. But, you know, the last time they did a hidden blade, it was Batista. He got fined $100,000. How many years ago was that, That's though? quite a few. And but no one's difference? done it since because you get fined $100,000. No, I bet you somebody's done it since. They're just slick about it. You know, I don't know if anybody's as magical as Bret Hart was in that one. I think he gets credit for that. But I'm sure other people probably were better with the blade than has been reported at least, or that was believed backstage. Hmm. Well, Not listen. everybody can have the option that John Moxley does, which is just go out there and Abdullah your butcher your head in front of Abdullah, everybody. Abdullah your butcher? Match. You know what I'm talking about. I don't know, actually. It's plaque. Something. I'm still yeah. waiting for this stupid plaque. Yeah, Bischoff. Paul and Bischoff or who? What in God's name is going on? Uh-oh. Who let is you it? in here? Everybody's favorite. Come over here. You can't even be seen. What? Oh, my God. Oh! Happy days here for Brian Alvarez. There it is. Presented oh, to F4W that. Online for passing 100,000 subscribers. Uh-huh. I want to give Oreo a hug. Come here, you big fat whale. Yes. <laughs> Thank you to everybody hey! out there. Uh-oh. Hey! Uh what are you doing? Brian? Oreo? Hey! Take it over the show! Oh no. Dumb! Oreo. Hit that music, brother! How oh, the hell with it? You know what? It's Monday. It's dance party. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. I love you guys! I love you! Oh. When can you have this much fun on a Monday on Wrestling Observer Live? I think we may have started something new here. I hate that whale! If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.